In this video, I'm going to be talking all about ambroxan, a molecule that completely changed perfumery. So if you're interested in ambroxan and how you can actually go and use it in your own perfumes to do things like increase the longevity and projection, as well as a little bit about the history and the different types of ambroxan, the different trade names, then definitely watch to the end of this video. Before we talk about ambroxan, we first need to talk about ambergris or ambergris. Now, ambergris is something that's produced by sperm whales. Now, imagine you're a sperm whale swimming around the ocean and you want to have something for dinner. Well, you might end up eating something like a giant squid or an octopus or something very large. And it turns out when you go and eat this, it can actually damage your intestines. So what the sperm whale does is it naturally produces this thing called ambergris to go and line its intestines to help them repair. Now, every now and again, the sperm whale can vomit out some of this stuff, and because it's lighter than water, what it does is it floats to the top of the ocean, where it kind of sits there. And when it's sitting there, it doesn't just do nothing, oh no, 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 it reacts with the water and the oxygen in the air above it. It undergoes a long process of chemical reactions, you can think of it as macerating, and all of this is happening while it's just floating around on top of the ocean. That is until a human comes along and decides to, for whatever reason, fish it out, or say it just washes up on the shoreline and someone discovers it. Now, this ambergris has been used throughout history since ancient times, not only for things like medicine, but also for perfumery. And that's because of its very unique smell. It's because of this smell that perfumers have been using it for centuries. And what they generally do is they take a lump of this ambergris and they go and tincture it in alcohol. And this tincture is something that they've been putting in their perfumes. If you go and look back at perfumery books from the 1700s, you'll find that they uh, add a tincture of ambergris to the perfumes. And this will do things like act as a fixative or kind of help it last just a little bit longer. And also add this kind of, as they describe, uh, amazing or great quality or great smell to it. Now, if you go and take a lump of this ambergris and you go and analyze it in a lab, what you find is only about 0.3% of the molecules inside of it actually contribute to the smell. When they went and did this in the 1970s, what the scientists actually found was one of the most important molecules contributing to the smell was something called ambroxide. And this had actually been discovered about 30 years earlier, but they just didn't know it was in ambergris until then. Now at this point, they really started experimenting with this new ambroxide molecule in perfumery. First they started mass producing it, and then they started using it in perfumes. In 1982, a perfume called Dracar Noir was released, and this featured really high levels of this ambroxide and this was based on a fougere structure if you're interested in fougeres a traditional family of perfumes check out the video i did on it a while back um, but this ambroxide when it was added to the fougere structure as well as with another molecule called dihydromersinol completely changed the genre forever after that and bred a whole new class of these modern fougere perfumes. Since then, this ambroxide has been used in countless perfumes and is now a staple in the modern perfumery palette. So then, what's this ambroxide I've been talking about? I thought the video was meant to be about ambroxan, right? Well, yeah, they're the same thing. I mean, you probably worked that out by now. So basically what happened is they discovered this ambroxide molecule and then obviously all of the different uh, fragrance companies wanted to go and make some of it so they went and manufactured their own using their own manufacturing method and then they released it under their brand name so ambroxan is just the brand name or the trade name of ambroxide from the company called cow that's k-a-o of course all of the big fragrance companies have their own brand names as well so for example for Givaudan, it's ambrofix for firmanish it's ambrox or ambrox super which is a new manufacturing method using uh, what they call white biotechnology to produce it i think it's meant to be a bit more sustainable you've also got iff who call it ambermore and they also saw something else called ambermore dl and that refers to a different uh, isomeric mixture. So if you don't know too much about chemistry, don't worry too much about this. But essentially this uh, original molecule, this ambroxan, this ambrox, this molecule is what's called chiral. So it just means that this certain molecule, it's arranged in a way that if you take a mirror image of it, it's actually technically different. I, you can't uh, superimpose it back on itself. So this happens quite a lot in chemistry. These things are called stereoisomers. 
And when you're making molecules, depending on what manufacturing process you choose, it may or not be something called stereospecific, which may mean when you create your molecule, you may get out the specific stereoisomer you want, if indeed you want a specific one, or you may get a mixture of the two. And when you have a 50-50 mixture of these two stereoisomers, you just simply call it ricemic. So if that was too much chemistry, uh, don't worry because it's not important. But basically what this all means is the Ambermore DL that IFF sell as opposed to their regular Ambermore, that's a mixture of the original Ambroxide molecule plus its mirror image. This mixture of the two isomers, by the way, also has other names. So another common one is Cetalox or Ketalox, depending on how you want to say it. So then that is Ambroxan or Ambroxide, whatever you want to call it. Now let's go and actually smell it. So I've got some of it here, and then I'll talk to you a little bit about how you can actually go and use this in your perfumes. So then, what I've got here is two different versions of the molecule. I've got Ambrofix, which is made by Givaudan, and then I've got Ambrox Super, which is the feminish version made by their new white biotechnology process. And both of these are pre-diluted down to 10% in alcohol, and that's just to make it easier to evaluate the smell, as I would recommend doing with all other perfumery raw materials as a baseline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a scent strip, which I've already pre-labeled earlier, so always label your scent strips. So I'm going to take the one for the Ambrox Super, dip it in. And then I've just done the same for the Ambrofix. This video is sponsored by Luxeterra, my online store where you can find all of the essential equipment for perfumery. Only good quality and good value for money products make the cut and I use almost all of the products myself when making perfumes for my brand. To browse the full range of products, visit www.lux-terra.co.uk or click the link in the description. So I'm just going to leave these here a little while for the alcohol to evaporate off. And while we do that, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how you might use them. So the first thing to note about this uh, Ambroxan is that it's very long lasting. It's definitely a base note. And this is good to know because you know it's gonna last right to the end in your perfume compositions. The second thing about it, which is very interesting, is it's very diffusive. So I can already smell those from here, even though I've just gone and dipped them in. Normally with a base note, you would expect it to be a lot more quiet and maybe you'd have to go right up to the scent strip uh, to smell it. But this, I've dipped it in and I can smell it already from this distance. So what that is, is something called projection or diffusion. Now, it turns out when you go and put this Ambroxan inside of your perfumes, it also adds projection and diffusion to your perfumes out of the nature of it itself being projecting and diffusing. Of course, it's going to add that Ambroxan smell to your perfume as well. So it's not kind of a, a thing you just add to your perfume to make an existing perfume more projecting with no side effects but nonetheless, it will go and help make your perfume more projecting. In fact, this is one of the reasons that this molecule is used so much and uh, so well-renowned in perfumery. It's because it's got both this projecting effect, but also it's a base note, so it's got a lot of longevity. Um, you can even kind of use it as a fixative, like you can with base notes in general, i.e. it will kind of make the other things last a bit longer. So it's quite a unique combination. Not many raw materials have both projection and also a fixative effect. And this is very useful because a lot of people want their perfumes to both last a long time, but they also want them to project and jump out at you. And not many molecules actually come under this uh, criteria, which means that it's very difficult to make your perfume actually do this thing. So having molecules in your perfume that have both of these properties really help you to achieve that goal. And that's why Ambroxan is so widely used. So then, now for the big moment, what does it actually smell like? So I've got the Ambroxan here. And so firstly, I'm just going to say it smells really, really pleasant. I actually think this is one of the molecules which I think has one of the nicest smells in all of perfumery. But the way I would describe it is it's firstly got this very sweet kind of ambery scent to it. And it's also got this very kind of uh, tranquil or calming kind of marine air kind of smell to it. And not in a kind of salty or sulfurous way like the sea, but it just gives you this feeling of kind of, um, for me, it is kind of just like, I don't know, not watery, but kind of the smell of like the kind of relaxing calmness, let's say, of the ocean. And it's got this kind of coupled with this kind of golden uh, sweet kind of smell 
but it's not overly sweet. It's not sweet in terms of like a vanilla sweet, not like the kind of sweet that really makes you think like, you know, the kind of sweetness that can kind of strangle you. It's this kind of very subtle sweetness. And then that is also coupled with, it's got kind of this like slight earthiness in the background, which I think is quite interesting. It reminds me just a little bit of things like cashmeran. And then it's also got this uh, woody amber quality to it. So it also reminds you just a little bit of other molecules like Isui Super. So now for the Ambrox Super, which is meant to be the same molecule, but just made by a different manufacturing process. So this one to me is actually a lot weaker. Um, I don't know why. It must be something to do with the exact mixture made from the way that Feminish produce it. Uh, and the smell is quite similar, but I find this one is, it's just a lot weaker. It doesn't give you that same kind of uh, like slap in the face, kind of that volume, that really, that big kind of diffusion shell of scent around it. Um, this one is a lot more subtle, but otherwise it does have a very similar smell. It's got the same kind of diffusive property and it has that same kind of calming, kind of ambery uh, smell with kind of those little hints of like earthiness and woody amber as well behind it. Personally, I prefer the amber fix and that's just because I find it's a lot more powerful. And since I really do like that Ambroxan smell or that amber fix smell that it has, I just think it's really nice to have that kind of, um, that big kind of cloud, you could say of that smell. So I would recommend and Ambrofix. Personally, if you're um, someone who doesn't like it so much, that particular smell, but you still want to get some of the beneficial effects, then maybe you would consider using the Ambrox Super. I've also heard uh, people say that you can use the Ambrox Super in place of the Ambrofix if you just go and use quite a bit more of it to account for that weaker smell. So I've heard some people say that they use two to three times the amount of Ambrox Super to replace the same amount of Ambrofix. So it's really up to you which one you choose. Um, personally, I would recommend the Amber Fix. Anyway, let's talk a bit about the usage in perfumes. So personally, myself, I like to use the Amber Fix at about 0.2% in the final perfume as just a baseline. And that's if I kind of want to give a boost and maybe the slightest kind of little Ambroxan uh, smell to the perfume. But in general, I find at that level, you don't really smell it particularly. It just kind of helps the perfume smell nicer. For those of you who are working in a relative concentration or who are working in terms of a concentrate, and then you go top that up, that's roughly corresponding to about one to 2% of your perfume concentrate, depending on how strong you make it. So it's more like 2% if you're doing an EDT or something more like 1% if you're doing an EDP. Then on the other hand, if you really want to emphasize it and really get like a strong kind of effect of increasing that projection and maybe start to smell more of it itself, I recommend going up to 0.5% of the final formula. Um, again, that's really starting to get into the region of kind of having it quite strong. Of course, you could go much higher if you wanted to, but then your perfume's really gonna start to strongly smell of that, which depending on what you're doing could be a good or a bad thing, but just know that that smell is quite overused in perfumery. So I do feel like if you have it really strong, your perfume's just gonna start to smell of Ambroxan. And because you smell that all the times in a lot of commercial perfumes, I think it's a bit more eloquent maybe just to have it at a bit of a lower level just to kind of let your perfume shine for the composition you've done, rather than just have a kind of big Ambroxan smell with your perfume there on the side. Now, in that vein, you can also go and use much lower doses. As I say, this is just kind of what's worked for me. You can also go and use trace amounts or really small amounts. If you go and do the experiment of your perfume with or without even a trace amount of Ambroxan, you should be able to notice some kind of difference. So as always, I would recommend you just go and experiment with it and see what works for you. Of course, a lot of it's gonna depend on if you actually like that smell or not, because I know some people don't like the smell. Some people can find it a little bit metallic um, and therefore want to avoid it or at least the amber fix version um, if you go and try different brands from different manufacturers even though it's the same molecule that different manufacturing process well any impurities that are also inside that they may be different too and that can go and affect the overall smell so apart from the level of usage what about the compositions like is there anything you should particularly use it with or avoid 
Well, the thing about this molecule is it just goes so well with everything. It really found a lot of success originally used in Fougere compositions, especially with dihydromersinol, so you could go and try that, but that doesn't mean that it can't be used anywhere else. In fact, it's used in all kinds of perfume compositions across the board, and in fact that's true for most of the molecules in this series of famous perfumery molecules that I'm doing, things like Hedio and Isoe Super. I've done videos on those, you can go check those out in the description. Um, but all of these molecules, they can really be used across the board in all perfume types. Now, it does go quite well, again, with ambery or woody amber notes, and that's just due to the fact that it's got that kind of smell itself. So if you do want to make an amber cord, for example, or a woody amber cord with things like Isui Super, Cedramba, those kind of aroma chemicals, then Ambroxan will especially, I think, kind of kind of meld right into that and go quite well. But again, it works in everything. I find, for example, in floral compositions, if you go and use it with rose and musks, that kind of thing, it can also work really well. So. As always with perfumery, it's up to you to be creative and try to use it where you can. Especially this one I think is really easy to use, so if you're a beginner and you haven't used it before, I really would recommend you pick some of this up and just go and try it, and I think you'll be astonished about the effect that it can have in your perfumes. Anyway, that's about it for this video. So I really hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about uh, Ambroxan, Ambrofix, Ambermore, Ambroxide, whatever you want to call it, and I hope you picked up some knowledge, and hopefully you picked up uh, something useful. I do videos like this every week covering different aspects of perfumery, all the way from raw materials to composing and also just understanding the basics. So if you're interested in that and you're not already subscribed to the channel, definitely subscribe and you'll get these come into your subscription feed. Anyway, that's it for this video and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.